everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to bring you along for an easy French bread recipe. It is so easy, so rewarding to have uh, fresh French bread on the table whenever you're making soup or for grilled cheese or whatever. It's delicious um, and it makes excellent French toast. I'm actually making two loaves today. One loaf is going to go with potato soup and the second loaf is going to go um, just sit on the counter and kind of stale and it's going to be French toast in the morning. So it's a great way if you do this recipe to just uh, meal prep as you're doing it without even really putting any effort into it. Um, so to start off, I have two tablespoons of just some active dry yeast in my bowl. And you may get to see me hand knead this today. I'm going to try one more time to use my KitchenAid, but I'm pretty sure I burnt up the engine, um, or the, not the engine, the motor, because uh, it, it smelled like it, and it was kind of smoking. So, we shall see. But that was one and three quarter cup of warm water. You don't want hot because you'll kill your yeast. But using warm water is just going to help activate it a little faster. Um, and then we're going to add a tablespoon of sugar. And adding the sugar now is going to just help, again, start up that yeast. Because we're going to give it something yummy for it to eat. So now we're just going to wait and let it sit for about 5-10 minutes just to make sure our yeast is healthy. I know my yeast is healthy, but it's a good habit to get in, especially if you're using bulk yeast. Um, I like to keep mine in the fridge or freezer, but if you don't, this is a great way to make sure it hasn't died. Okay, so it's not even been uh, five minutes, and you can see where it's starting to puff up. That just shows that your yeast is ready to go. So to this, four cups of flour of your choice, obviously. And then we want about two teaspoons of salt. I'm gonna hook it up to my KitchenAid with a dough hook and we're gonna get this kneaded up. I may end up doing it by hand. Um, just depends. You can add uh, vital wheat gluten to this if you wanted. I don't. Um, I don't add vital wheat gluten to my artisan type breads. I only add it to my um, sandwich bread. As you could see, um, I did need to need this by hand, but that is fine. Um, I just, I guess it's a good uh, learning, learning day because when you are kneading by hand, you need to remember that it's going to take longer to knead by hand than it is to knead with your stand mixer. So whenever you are reading a recipe, unless it states that they're kneading by hand, nine times out of ten they are probably kneading with a stand mixer which there's nothing wrong with that except the time it, of the kneading is going to be different um so if it says five minutes with a stand mixer it's probably going to be more like eight to ten minutes if you're doing it by hand uh at least in my uh previous experiences. So I have this grease. This is just the bowl that I originally had it in and I'm going to cover it until it doubles in size. Just let it rest on my counter. Um, another thing real quick, if you are kneading by hand, again, this is just my personal experience. I find that it is a lot easier to accidentally add too much flour because you need to remember as you're kneading, 
you want some of that tension that comes from it. It's hard to explain, but not sticking to the surface, but just kind of stretching it a little bit, but it pops up off the surface. It doesn't stick to the surface. It just kind of, you have that friction where if you keep adding more and more and more flour, it, you're not going to get that tension, but you're also going to make your bread very dense. Um, so it's just something to remember. If you are curious about it and you want a more in-depth video, just let me know. I'm going to cover this, let it set, and I will bring you back when we're ready to go on to our next step. Okay, so my dough has doubled in size. It actually almost overproofed. Um, I was messing with something else. But you want to go ahead and deflate your dough. And then just put it on a clean surface. You do not need any extra flour. And I have... Um, I just have over here... It's a baking stone with parchment on top or you can use some cornmeal on the bottom just sprinkled um either will work but you just want to cut or divide your dough in half not cut it divide it in half and essentially we're going to do kind of like a cinnamon roll roll you want to stretch this into a rectangle And you can make one big one if you'd rather make one big one, but I'm doing two smaller ones. Okay. Once you get it stretched to how you want, and it doesn't have to be perfect, this is a rustic looking loaf. Pinch your seam. Pinch in your ends, close them up, and then lay this whole thing wherever you're going to be baking it. So we don't want to touch, we don't want to have to move them again after we've done this round. And you don't have to do what I just told you, I'll show you the difference. Um, You can also do something like this. Just make sure it's closed and there aren't a lot of rips or anything in it. Other way, so you'll get to see it both ways. You just want to shape it into a log and transfer. So there's what they look like. There's what they look like. And we're going to let these rise again for about eh, 45 minutes to an hour. And then um, we will score them and I will show you how to do that and how to bake them off. Okay, so you can see that they have just about doubled in size. Good enough for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven to 375 and once it comes up to temp, these are going to go in um, just like this for 15 minutes and I'm also, when I turn on my oven to 375 and let it preheat, I'm going to set a pan underneath where the rack that I'm going to put these on. So on the bottom rack, I'm going to put a pan full of water and let that all preheat together and then throw this in and start my cook time for 15 minutes. And that water in there is going to create a nice crust on the outside of this. It's going to be marvelous and it does make a difference. And it's so easy. It's such an easy step. Just go ahead and do it. You won't be sorry. So I have a little razor and we're just going to make a couple cuts along the top. You can do as many or as little as you want. This one's been used for sourdough and it is getting dull.
And that's all there is to it. So I will bring you back when these are coming out of the oven. All right, guys. As you can see, um, <laughs> we did a big uh-oh on bread baking, which is you're supposed to wait until it cools. But I'm telling you, this was so good. My husband took a side, like one on each side. Um, but this is what they'll look like if you don't do an egg wash on them. But you can see they still puff up more once they cook and they do have a nice little crisp crust um you just won't get that dark golden brown unless you do a little egg wash on them before you stick them in the oven so i hope you enjoyed this video for some quick and easy french bread and i will see you for my next video thanks for watching